32. Your questions make the show. The more questions I have, the longer the show goes. Today's show is going to be a pretty short show. I only have two questions. So we're going to jump right into it in a second. A couple little announcements. I did a video with just percussion only of the song Africa. I left it as a drumless track. I want to encourage the community to step out and make some videos with Africa. So I'm challenging the community to make some videos with Africa. And if we get over five videos, over five videos made, I'll, have, I'll make it a little contest and I will award some kind of a prize. Now I don't know what the prize is going to be. It's going to be something I can ship and mail, so it will not be a symbol. 2112 drums. Okay? No more symbols. I'm not giving away any more my symbols. But it will be something I can ship and mail, and I will send it to you. And it'll be something, just a little token for taking the time to be a part of this. I'm trying to like prod you to do this. I um, there's some guys that can really do ed video editing, so you can have a lot of fun with this. And I hope some of you will jump in on it. Okay, so that's the first plug. Second plug, Jeff Holden's channel. Why am I plugging Jeff Holden's channel? Because I had a lot of fun with Jeff Holden doing uh, an hour and a half of just chatting back and forth with Jeff. We had a lot of fun. Um, so he just had Bonzolium, Terry Keating, on his show. Uh, and I was so excited to watch it. I asked a couple questions. Um, and eventually those questions got answered, you know, through the stream of consciousness of the show. So... Check out Jeff's channel. If you can't watch it live, watch the replays. Great stuff. A lot of fun. Um, Jeff's a great guy, a great drummer, and very knowledgeable of vintage drums and gear. And um, I just want to throw out to him. Second, the next person I want to throw out to is Beats by Jay. Beats by Jay's got a Saturday show. Um, what can I say? Jay is, has some, I heard he had some kind of a DJing background, he had an internet radio or something he was doing. So he's got the voice, um, but he likes to do videos that you guys produce. So if you want to be on Jay's show, you got to send him an email and basically give him permission to use your videos because he doesn't want any YouTube copyright strikes. Okay, so that's, that's the story there, but check out Beats by Jay and the Saturday show. Um, I think it's called What's it called? The Music Musician? I can't remember the name of the show. I know Jeff's is Will Drum for Food. Um, I think it's called The Musing Musician. That's Beats by Jay. Two shout outs. Africa Contest. A little bit about some stuff I'm up to. Uh, I'm posting regularly about this album project I'm working on. I haven't, I'm not doing every song that I do record. It's not gonna be a video of, of how I recorded it, but I am putting up some of that. Now those are rough tracks. And I'm not putting any vocals in because I don't think it's fair to the vocalist to use roughs. But hopefully when the, the song does come out and I get a final mix of it, I'll actually do another drum cover, sync it up to what I played. Um, the last one I just released, um, there is a little fill in there that probably won't sync up. But you know what I say? That's, that's okay. You know what I mean? Um, I actually put a different fill in one spot. I was kind of going for it, but that was the track that worked. Um, it's interesting to watch the process of making, you know, recording anything. Because recording studio versus video is you can get away with a lot of magic, okay? Now, he isn't beat detected in being my, my track, so that's a good sign that I'll probably lock up with it. He seems to like it the way it is. But then again, I may come out and hear the final product and find out he just totally put me on the grid. You know, you never know what's going to happen. So when you give somebody a track and you're doing it for a project like this, you don't know what they're gonna do. They're basically taking your tracks. You know, they're buying your tracks. So that's what that's what you get. So, anyhow, that's a fun project. I'm updating those things. Um, let's jump into the show. Let's jump into the show. First question. Oh, one more person to, to actually shout out to is CCM Drummer, who's the first question. That's why I looked down. CCM Drummer uh, did an interview with me in August. And it's an interesting interview, and I would recommend you find his channel and find the interview. It was me talking about playing in church and playing in the penalty box, which I call the, the drum booth. I call it the penalty box. So if you want to see that interview, great. All right? I'm not calling out any ticks today, Mike. All right. First question, CCM Drummer. Uh, he asked, what do I think about the movie Whiplash? 
And do I think it would accurately portray the drummer and band director relationship? And the answer to that question is, I like the movie Whiplash. I don't think it gives you a good picture of how a band director and a drummer would normally work in a band situation. Um, that's not my experience working with professionals. It's not my experience working in college with people. Um, I will tell you that they're more demanding in college. Um, the jazz band director at Jersey City State when I was in college, um, he was pretty he was pretty much, he was a tough guy to work for, but he wasn't that tough. He wasn't that kind of guy, throwing stuff at you kind of guy, um, ber berating you. Uh, berating you is not professional, okay? That's just not a professional thing. But he was a guy they had a nickname for. I'm not going to say it, but it was kind of a funny nickname when you're 20 years old. Not funny, it's just a very disrespectful nickname, actually, as you get older. But um, we all knew it when we were in college. But yeah, um... I will tell you that I've worked with people like that guy. I worked with a guy in a church once who was just mean to people. And one time I started a song the wrong way and he cut me off and he started it again and really embarrassed me in front of the congregation and it was a worship set. Normally you kind of work through it and you kind of readjust, but he couldn't readjust. His perfectionist said no and he just gave me the look. Um, Matter of fact, the day I left that church, I'll never forget this, was my last service playing drums there, too. Um, his wife was the piano player, and he counted off the second tune, and she went into the third song, and she was lost. And he stopped, stopped it, cut her off, and he gave her the dirtiest look and said some nasty thing. And it was like, it's not the reason I left the church, but it was one of the things that made it very apparent to me I didn't belong there. Because that's just not how you treat somebody. You know, so anybody's in the name of Christ doing that is not really, it's not really a good example to me of what you're all about. So this guy was a trip. But um, I, don't, I won't work with those kind of people. You know, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll do anything once, but if I get treated like that by somebody, I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of there. So the way this kid was treated was terrible. Now, it wasn't a realistic movie in a lot of respects. The way he played the ride cymbal and the way he tightened down his hand, that's not, it's impossible to play fast, number one. Number two, if you have a car accident, you don't leave the scene of an accident and leave your car in the middle of the road to go play the gig. Plus, if, if you had an accident like he had, I don't even know how he got out of the car to play the gig. That's all another part of the, fa the fantasy there. But, um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff in the movie, a lot of liberties they took, movie time liberties. But what's new in, in life, right? Now, if you want to talk about drummer movies I really like that have come with drummers in it, movies with drummers, uh, I always like the movie That Thing You Do, you know, with the O-Needers, the Wonders. Uh, I thought that drummer was a good actor, and he learned how to play drums on the set. I know Kenny Arnoff was one of the guys that played all the, the actual songs, but he had, to, he had to mimic it, so he had to learn how to play, so that was pretty cool. He was a good drummer. Um, really good. I thought the kid who played in Whiplash did a good job too, for the most part, except for that thing with his hands and his hands bleeding and fast. Yeah, that was just fake. It was fake. Great players on the Whiplash soundtrack too. I think Peter Erskine played drums on some of that, so pretty cool. All right. Next question is from Mike Frazano. Now, before I get to my next question, I want you to know that my symbols today on this kit are flat rides. I had a question about flat rides last week, and I just wanted you to hear what a flat ride sounds like. Got a lot of definition, a little pingy. This one's even drier, except for I put rivets in it. That's what a lot of guys do with flat rides, to get that sustain out of them. The rivets give it the sustain versus this just dies off. Versus my 19 inch Corope. Try that again. Take two. This thing just goes for days. Okay. So let's do them together. See which one goes first. It's got a different kind of dying off, but it did die off. 
this one's still going here, okay? So the, the rivets give it a little bit more sustain, but I find flat rides are really good for jazz playing. Now, another question that came from last week, I'm catching up on some of the things I should have brought out as toys. This is my 13 inch flat symbol, flat hat symbol. And I have some a ribbon in it. Actually, I actually have three ribbon holes. I have three air holes, and then I've got three more ribbon holes, which is where I put the jingles. So this has got jingles on it. So this is my next question is about KZ hi hats. This is the KZ. A lot of chick on that bad boy. So let's let's hear how this sounds. The non KZ. disco with this thing. It's got that disco thing really barking at you. So that's what the that's what that's what the jingle does to it. Anyhow, let's get to Mike Fazano's question. Mike Fazano's question is about the KZs. And his question about the KZ is, can you tell me what my thoughts are on the KZs? Because they have such a bite and a chick. I think he's looking to switch to something with a little more bite and chick. Let me give you my KZ story. Um, first off, I always wanted a set of KZs after I saw Jeff Picaro playing them in a Modern Drummer magazine. I think it's November 1988. He was featured on the cover. And there was a setup of his red pearl kit in a studio, and he had his Piesty cymbals, and he had a set of 13-inch KZs. He talked in the article about using 13-inch KZs and this 14-inch Tosco cymbal setup he had, besides his typical um, heavy 13-inch 602 hi-hats. So he was a Piesty guy, but he had a set of these. This was becoming the sound of 80s rock and funk. Uh, Dave Weckl played these cymbals, Carter Beaufort played these cymbals in the 90s and continues to play them, I think, still to this day. Um, Omar Hakim played these cymbals, and a lot of other guys. I think Vinny was playing them, too, at one point. Anyhow, the cymbal sound became out of vogue, but I never got a set when I was in the 80s or in the 90s. It took till about 2011 for me to get a set of these. And it was my friend Ken Burton came over one day and he said, hey, I got these KZs and I always wanted a set. And I made a trade with them. And normally when I make a trade, I say to guys, don't sell the symbol for a month. Let's see if we like it. If we don't like it, let's see if we can trade back, okay? You know, work something out to trade back. Anyhow, I didn't say that on that one. And I traded my HH, 14-inch HH Duo hats, which is the laved, unlaved, top symbol and bottom symbol. Super dark hi-hats was the thing I really dug and I bought them in 1999. I was going for that darker, darker, darker thing, which eventually ended with my Kuropes, by the way. And then I bought some Piesties and now I've been working on more of a brighter thing. But um, you would think these fit. They don't fit with my Piesties. I try to put them with my Piesties like Jeff did. It just doesn't work for me. So my opinion of the KZs is I don't like them. Matter of fact, I didn't like them two weeks into it, and I called my friend Ken back and said, hey, can I get my HHs back? And he already sold them. So to this day, I still look for duo hats to see if I can find another pair. That was a nice set of hats. So I, I gave up a good set for these KZs. So I'd love to dump these things someday. If the right thing came along, I would dump them. I usually play, when I'm playing B20 cymbals, Zildjian or Sabian, I have a pair of 13-inch Sabian AA regular hats that I play a lot and I have a set of 14 inch new beats which are like the regular hats Zildjian those are my two go-to B8 uh, B20 symbols as you know the Pisces I got the giant beats and the roots and the 505s so I'm not a big fan of the KZs now let me say something about the 14 inch KZs the 14 inch KZs I, I know I wouldn't like them if I heard them I have a friend who's got a set of Sabian Fusion hats. 
The Sabian Fusion hats are the same thing as the KZs, except for it's got that heavy, heavy, unlaid bottom symbol, the Fusion symbol. And it's really thick and heavy, and it's got a thinner top. And my friend Pat O'Donnell had a set of the Fusion hats, and I never liked them. They were just too chunky to me. So I should have known I didn't really dig the KZs. But um, anyhow, I traded for them, I got them, and that's it. So these are mine for the time being until one day I dump them for something. I don't have the heart to sell stuff these days, so if I find the right guy who wants to trade with me, that's what I do. By the way, I don't trade with everybody. I only trade with people I know. And I don't trade with people for stupid stuff, just so you know that. So um, I need to say that for some reason. I had some guy thought I was going to trade with him. I don't trade with everybody. I only trade with people I can trust and I know and who know who knows what a, a equal value is. A trade is about not screwing each other. It's about you get something you want, I get something I want in the deal. Otherwise, it's not much of a trade, right? So anyhow, KZ's not the top of my list of hats to play. Matter of fact, they're the last choice I have in the in my bag these days is the KZ's. So that's that. Anyhow, thank you for coming and watching Ask Girl Anything. Remember to like. Please subscribe. Um, your questions make the show. If I don't have questions, I won't have a show. And if this is waning down to the point where there's other things more important than Ask Girl Anything, I get it. So I'm going to stay here as long as I can, but I'm not committed to staying here for life. The show could find its way out. I'll have to do something else. So if you've got some ideas for other things you'd like to see me talk about, please uh, let me know. Um, but at this point in time, drum covers, occasional lesson, I'm going to do something on sticks at some point, and I'm going to do something on um, Gretsch drums at some point too. But for the most part, uh, I'm just really enjoying playing my covers, the covers I enjoy playing and sharing little bits of my playing. I'm trying to do more stuff I enjoy doing these days. So, Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed Ask Girl Anything. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe, please like, and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.